Hey, and welcome back to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this tutorial, we're going to be continuing with our VFX core skills for beginners. And actually, we, this is the final one, actually. So we've gone through everything almost um, for the pipeline for doing a basic asset into shot. In the last one, we did some, it was not really compositing, but it was a slap comp. But um, it'll give you an idea of um, a really basic sort of A over B sort of comp. Um, and yeah, this is the last one. So what we're going to do is bring our rendered sequence into Resolve. And all we're going to do is we're going to reapply our black magic look back onto our footage. So we get the black magic um, look because if, if you've got that camera, that's kind of what you want. Or you can just kind of play with the colors however you like at the end. You can kind of do whatever you want that you feel to your taste. It's it's more just to play around with stuff and get an idea of um, what we're doing. So this is kind of why we all worked in a linear workflow. So now all our color spaces are all the same. We've rendered it out and it's all working well together. So now when we apply this LUT on the end in Resolve, it will all equally work together. So yeah, this is the last one. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and stop saying um all the time. It's... um. Quite annoying because I, I hear myself quite a lot. So in the next series, I'm going to try and not say um as much. And yeah, and I need to figure out what we're going to do. So I'll probably in the next one, it won't be super complicated, but we're going to work more on integration, I think, because we've got our basic workflows down. And if we follow this sort of pipeline and work on each individual step, we can create some really good uh, visual effects work. So the next thing that we will probably, I think I will do is, is figure out something that we can work on CG integration into plate a lot cleaner so it fits, sits in the plate nicer. So at the moment, all we did was um, just put A over B render, no in between or anything. It was very simple. Anyway, I'm going on anyway. So we're going to open up Resolve, we're going to load in our rendered slap comp, and we're going to stick the look back on top. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. Um, it hasn't been super long. Um, there we go, saying um again. And the next one hopefully should be uh, a little bit more complicated and we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the series and let's get going. Okay, so we have Resolve open and we used this before on our transcoding of our footage. So we'll effectively do the reverse of our final slap comp. So I'm just gonna go to media, then I'm gonna navigate to our slap comp. And you can use this in a, you can do this grain in, in Nuke or any sort of, any sort of compositing so we don't have to go into Resolve. Um, the reason why I'm going into Resolve is so I can just revert back to the black magic look. So I don't think um, it's widely available. I might be wrong, but um, I'm just going to bring it back into black uh, into Resolve and just undo the transcoding basically. So I'm going to go to Images, Slap Comp, and obviously we need to render off our actual delivery range. So I'm going to click and drag this in and we can see it's all dark because it's in our linear color space. So everything's looking pretty all, it's, it's dark. You can't really see much because the color space is in, but it's all looking pretty level. Ooh, we'll go to our edit first and I'm just going to click and drag this in. Ooh, click and drag. And I'm just going to scrub through. And obviously we have that stuff on the end that we don't want. So. It's up to you how you want to cut this. I'm just going to remove that now. So we don't have any at the start. End, sorry. Cool. Just going to check the start. Oh, and we've done our basic cut. And you can do as as long as you want or as short as you want. So now I'm just going to go to my color. So this is going to be the most important part because we're currently in a, a linear color space. If we rendered this all off now, it would probably do some nasty stuff into uh, linear to sRGB or it would just render off in a completely wrong color space. Um, so we need to apply a look to it. And it's really simple. So we're just going to right click on our node. I'm going to go to LUT. And you've got all these LUTs here. So you've got like Aces, Ari, 
But what we want to do, we want to go down to our VFX IO. And we have all these ones that we used before. So we've got our, what we used before was Black Magic Film to 4K linear. So what I would naturally do is just go back and do the reverse. So linear to Black Magic 4K. So now you can see that we're not in a linear color space anymore. And we've brought everything back. And you see it's, it's matching pretty well. Um, the only thing that I probably would say that I would change on this, we go back to our edit. Let's go back to color. It is probably, probably could have lifted these shadows in, in a, in a pre-grade or something like that. So it's not so dark under here as well. Cause but yeah, it's entirely up to you what you want to do. But I'm just going to leave it as that. We've just reapplied our black magic look back onto it. And like I say, you can play around with the colors if you want. Um, it's entirely up to you, really. Um, so you've got your gamma and you can and you can see it's all... When we look at this, we can see it's all raising together. There's not bits... This doesn't... No matter what we do here... It still looks like it still looks like it's in the same color space. So, if you want to bring it all up, if it is a little bit dark, we can sort of boost it. And effectively, this would be um, your client grade at the end that you would have. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this. You can lift it. Oh, I'm just playing around with it. Change the temperature, make it warmer, make it cooler. So you're actually just doing the final grade at the end. And imagine, so you'd probably actually do this on a separate node because we're, we're just playing around with it. So you'd probably actually right click in, add node and add a serial. Let's right click. Yeah, let's remove that look. Then let's add the look onto this one. So we'll do it properly. So we'll do linear to black magic 4K film. And we will reset all that because that's on that node. So we don't want anything on here. Then all our edits will be on this one. Because then when we do other shots, we can we can save this out and have it as let's say it's a client grade or something like that. And we can bring this up and just play around with the colours. I'm not and you can sort of see what it's doing. I only want to bring up the brightness a little bit. Also, make sure you're on a monitor that's... In fact, I'm not actually going to play with any of this because I think I'm just on the wrong monitor. So, I'm just going to... It's quite hard to see, so I'm just going to turn my light off. <laughs> so, you just want to play around with it and, like, like I say, play around with the colours. If you want it warmer, there's, there's no... This is your final taste sort of thing. So obviously if you want it nice and cold, like um, you can bring the temperature down, it's all working together. If you want it warmer, bring it, obviously that's like Mars, so you don't want it that warm. So, but you want to do it within like, within reason. Don't go too crazy. But you can see how this is really, you can change this to almost an evening or a night shot, almost. Just by bringing it down. You can almost go to your light and bring down the exposure. So it's darkening our light points, so it's making it darker, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna leave as it is, but just Play around with the whole thing so like you can go in global and change it all around. But let's not do that. And this is part of the fun. So just obviously don't go insane and do crazy weird stuff. Because you probably want to show this in a reel or something. So But yeah, you kind of see that the reason why we're working in the linear color space. So we can then imagine this is our client grade and they want it cooler. And we can play around with that. So we're quite warm here, so I'm actually just going to bring the temperature down. A 
tiny bit. I like it a little bit cooler. Let's just release that, sorry. Well, I'm not really going to play with it that much, to be honest, because... Let's just bring it down. And obviously we're changing the look a little bit, so... But that's fine. So we're pretty much done. I'm going on, just playing around. So we're just going to go to deliver now. And we're going to call this bird box. Um, final delivery. <laughs> you just want to know it's the final, I guess. Um, cool. And we'll go to browse. And we'll go to... And we'll just stick it in there for now. Obviously, that's not the great this place, but what we'll do, we'll just go to... It's just so we can find it. In fact, actually, no, let's go to a proper place. Let's go IO, Birdbot Project, and just go to Movies. Cool, so we're saving it in our project files. So this is entirely up to you how you want to do this. I would probably suggest if you go MP4 and H264, it's just going to work the best for you. And then we can just do it as 4K, or you can do it as 1080p. So advanced settings. We don't need to do any of this. We're just going to leave it as it is. It's forced debayer to the highest quality. And forced sizing to the highest quality. Cool. So our file, bird box delivery. We're not going to have any digits in the file name. Shouldn't do because it should just be dot mov. Let's uh, leave that anyway. Uh, cool. Yeah, so we don't need any of that. We don't need any audio because we don't have any audio on it. And let's just check through this all. MP4, 340 by, yep. Yeah, 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 it's all good. And we'll just add to render key. Ah, okay, so we forgot to change our project settings because we're viewing it at 1080p and it doesn't make a difference, um, but it will reset all our settings annoyingly. So let's do this again. Delivery MP4. Let's go to browse. Okay. Let me tidy up my computer. I've got loads of junk on here. Cool, so we're doing the same thing again. MP4 H264. Force debate to the high front. Bypass re encode when possible. Yeah, leave all that. As, pretty much going to leave most of it as standard. Not going to do anything complicated. Change this to four. I don't think this affects it, but I'm um, going to turn audio off because we don't have any audio. And you can add audio if you want. Um, and you could also be doing this in Premiere. Um, I'm just doing this in Resolve because it's free and it has the black magic looks in it. And then click Add to Render Key. And I'm just going to click Render All. And that's going to render it all off and it's going to do it in our... It should be pretty quick, so it's not a very long frame range. So once this is done, we'll hopefully it looks the same when we uh, play it in the MP4. I don't think I've missed anything here, but there's always that chance that I have missed something. But yeah, um, we've pretty much come to an end of this series. I know it's really simple. We've only just done a bird box, but hopefully like, it gives you a really good sort of grounding of the whole process. But it's not only just knowing the whole process. You're going to discover what part of the process you really enjoy and what you want to focus on. Because no doubt there will be bits you'll be like, I hate that. And I don't want to do it. And it's it's good to know that sooner than rather than later. And there's going to be bits that you really enjoy. So finding out, uh, it's kind of understanding the whole pipeline will help you perfect or get much better as an artist in the area you want to pursue. So that's now rendered off. I'm going to play with VLC. 
I'm just going to click and drag it across. Oh, that's massive. Cool. So it's looking. Let's bring it back to the start. Press play. It's, it's, it's looking pretty good. It's exactly how we see it in Resolve, which is a good thing. We don't want it to be any different. Um, obviously, the, the main thing that we have here is that the integration between the actual bird box and the tree is, is looking a bit flat in areas. We could, really could do some extra stuff here. Possibly um, some twigs or some dirt on the tree. But also with our lighting as well. Because when you look at this, you've also got to sort of analyze your own work as well. And it's, it's pretty important to do. So because we only use the HGRI, it limits ourselves to more creative lighting, which is why we might get some issues with integration. Using a HDRI is great. It will get you really good results fast. It won't get you the best results fast. Being able to light with uh, manually will get you some really good results. Um, and you'll be able to sort of build up these areas around here. But also, like, um, being able to... We could have added a little bit. We probably could have added an extra light here to make it so it's not so dark. Um, but other than that, I think it's it's pretty good for our first little mini project of just adding a little bird box. Um, I was going to say something else, but I just completely forgot. But yeah, uh, it's mostly our integration that's kind of missing out here. Oh yeah, and also we're going on about lighting, so and analyzing your own work. So if we just look, I'm just going to pull this across. So, at the moment, it's looking pretty good, just for HDRI. Obviously, our integration's not great, and that's fine. We weren't planning on doing any of that. But then we also use just the HDRI. But because we only have just the HDRI, we have limited control over it, apart from changing the exposure and orientating it. So if we actually look at this tree, if we, we probably should have pushed the bird box actually further up then we'll place it here um, because then we could just place it in a, a solid shadow area but we didn't you can if you if we look at this we can see the lighter patches of the light coming through the leaves and it's sort of coming across here and we haven't got that in our HGRI so we would need to add that in some manual lighting so that's why you would want to light with more than just a HGRI and it will just give you much more realistic results and it will just make your uh, renders look so much better. So HDRI is always a good starting place, but you still want to do your lighting uh, with some more manual lights as well. So you can get these in with some light blockers or use some gobos to try and sort of match this. But other than that, I'm probably just going on. And um, we've finished. We finished this whole bird box tutorial and I hope um, you guys have enjoyed it and you've learned a lot. Um, and you, it hopefully gets you going on your like, path into VFX. And yeah, um, I'll try and figure out what we'll do for the next one. We will definitely do something that's got more integration into it because that's a really key aspect in VFX is making sure that your, your work integrates with your footage. And that's pretty much it. If, if it doesn't, it's not working. So something like this, we could quite easily make some twigs or if you want to go further, make some twigs or you could probably paint some stuff in comp. But other than that, we're, we're done. So I really hope you enjoyed this little series. Um, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help. And um, I appreciate all your comments. It really does. It, it's, it's nice when you, uh, you guys all comment on stuff and can talk about stuff. And yeah, so we're pretty much done. So I'm going to figure out what we do next. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you in the next series. Thanks for watching.